So skipping some definitions, unsafe structure, a structure of building which in the determination of the administrator is one, in a condition presenting a substantial danger or hazard to public health, safety, or welfare. Two, is a dilapidated building which is unused by the owner or uninhabited because of the deterioration or decay and constitutes a fire hazard or subjects adjoining properties to a danger of damage by storm Soil erosion or rodent infestation or is a place frequented by trespassers and transients seeking a temporary shelter or hideout. Unsafe structure. Use. The purpose for which any land structure or building is designed, maintained, or occupied. We need to have the common definitions for words, right? Variants. If we don't have the same common definitions for the words that we're using, are we even having a conversation? Are we even... Is communication even being established? Variants. Deviation from the requirements of this code is approved by procedures described in Article 6.30C3. Vacator, vacation, vega, vehicle, service, center, vested, property, right, water, sewage, treatment, facility, watershed, weeds, and brush, wildlife, corridor, and yard. Yard is the space on the same lot on the same lot as a building or structure that is unoccupied and open to the sky. Is it open to the sky? Well, then that's not a yard. That's not a yard, you son of a bitch. Zoning districts. Oh, shit. We're getting... Let's just go straight to it, you know. Zoning districts, section 3.10, establishment of zone districts. General zone districts established. The following zone districts are established. The use table set forth. Da, 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 da. Number one, agricultural district A. Number two, residential, rural residential district RR. Three, estate residential ER, business slash commercial district BC, industrial district I, urban residential district UR. And that's it. Overlay zones. Nope. So just these goddamn six. So if you're in Costilla County, you're either living on an industrial piece of property, a business commercial piece of property, urban residential district, or an estate residential, or rural residential district, or agricultural district. Those are the only six districts. Is it for farming, or is it for business? Is it for industrial, or is it for rural residential? Estate residential, or rural residential? Maybe it's urban residential. So you got three different residentials. And you have an agriculture and a commercial business district and an industrial district and three residential residential districts. And the differences between them all, agricultural district, the purpose of the agricultural district is to preserve and protect rural areas of the county where the conservation of agricultural resources and agricultural production is of major importance and where uses must be protected from the uncontrolled and unmitigated residential, commercial, and industrial uses. To that end, no parcel of land containing 160 or more acres that is classified in the agricultural zone district shall be permitted to be developed with more than one dwelling unit per 160 acres of land. Number two, rural residential district. The purpose of the rural residential district is to protect rural agricultural areas while allowing for residential areas developed at a density and character compatible with agricultural uses. All unincorporated areas of the county which are recognized as within subdivisions by the county accessor assessor as of the enactment of this code in which subdivisions are predominantly lots of 35 acres or more are rural residential to that end no parcel of land containing more than 35 acres that is classified in the rural residential district shall be permitted to be developed with more than one dwelling unit per 35 acres of land three estate residential er the purpose of a state residential district is to provide areas where management and maintenance of agricultural resources is of incidental value, allowing for residential areas developed at a higher density. All unincorporated areas of the county which are recognized as within subdivisions by the county assessor as of the enactment of this code in which subdivisions are predominantly lots of less than 35 acres are estate residential for business commercial district. The purpose of the business commercial district district is to provide appropriate areas for commercial service, wholesale, and office uses required by residents of and visitors to Costilla County in a manner which is consistent with the Costilla County Comprehensive Plan. Five, industrial. The purpose of the industrial zone district is, for, is to provide appropriate areas for industrial and service businesses in locations where conflicts with residential, commercial, and other land uses can be minimized. Recycling center. 
Urban residential district. The purpose of the urban residential district is to provide for residential development at higher densities. At higher densities in areas where central water and sewer services can be provided, this zone is also intended to be applied to existing developed areas of historic communities, particularly Fort Garland. It is the intent of this zone district be applied to existing developed residential lots that are currently non-conforming as to lot size. A. Review criteria. The following criteria shall be applied to all zone change requests for the urban residential zone district. I. The area proposed for development or existing lots shall be served by central water and sewer systems. I. I. Uses permitted in the urban Residential zone district shall be governed by the use table in section 4.1 of this code application of the urban residential zone district shall be consistent with the recommendations of the Costilla County Comprehensive Plan B. Dimensional regulations, I, building setbacks for new construction in the urban residential district shall be established during the land use permit review process. All structures and setbacks existing in the urban residential district at the time of adoption of the zone district shall be considered to be legally established and exempt from the provisions of the non-conforming use section of this code. Reference Article 7B, Overlay Zone Districts Established. So, I'm going to keep on reading, but what have we learned so far? Well, we've learned that the purpose of the Planning and Zoning Laws of Costilla County is... There's several purposes. There's like 10 of them. I just got six of them here. Why do we have planning and zoning laws in Costilla County? Well, we need an orderly development. We need an orderly development of, of Costilla County. We need to protect our quality of life. We need to protect our agricultural culture. We need to respect our Sangre de Cristo land grant. We need to promote the economics. We need to encourage innovations in development. We need to encourage innovations in development. We need to encourage inno innovations in development. The San Grande de Cristo land grant says that it's open range. It's open range. As long as you got a couple cows and a couple goats, then your cows and goats get to eat the grass. You get to get the grass, the timber, and the water. That's according to the San Grande de Cristo land grant. I think it's also closer to San Luis. I think it's a district. It's not It's not countywide, is it? Maybe it's countywide. I'm not for sure. But those are the reasons to have planning and zoning laws of Costilla County. To respect the San Grande de Cristo land grant. To encourage the innovations and development. To promote, to promote the economics. To encourage an orderly development of Costilla County. To protect the quality of life. To maintain the agricultural culture that is Costilla County. The Planning and Zoning Office also regulates the signs according to Article 5.3. So even signs are regulated by Planning and Zoning. I would say most signs are bullshit. But if you have a sign that says, you know, we'll mow your lawn for $10. You got to have a job and you got to start a business, right? You got to have a job or start a business if you want to make it in America. Therefore, having a sign... That says what your occupation is or what, you know, sort of at-home business you're offering. I think it's smart. It's smart to have and you shouldn't be punished for it. Oh, cut hair. Come in for $5 haircuts. Is that a sign? You got to pay $1,000 to put that sign out there. It's just a fucking board. It's just a, a board with spray paint. You need $1,000 to cut hair. Motherfucker, by the time I do that, then I'll be bankrupt. Well, I'm not thinking about that. I know this. I know you're not thinking about this. Sheds, outbuilding, and other farm structures are okay as long as they're under 120 square feet. It's okay to build solar panels or to have solar panels for single-family homes. It's okay to do small excavations. It's okay to raise some livestock and some plants, but don't raise any marijuana or trees. Don't raise any marijuana or trees. Water is scarce. So the trees and marijuana just takes up so much water. Sheds, outbuildings, other farm structures are okay. Solar panels are okay. Construction and operation of a seasonal extender hoop house is okay. So where they're sitting there saying you can't plant marijuana and trees, you can have an extender hoop house. And an extender hoop house is just PVC pipe outside of your home. So you're allowed to have like a sort of a, a what you call the uh, garden, a... Um, Plastic, 
garden. Jesus. I forget what they call it. Where you raise a bunch of plants inside of a, like a house, a garden house. It's escaping me for now. I'll think of it later. But basically a hoop house is just like a half of a garden house, right? Just half of a, it's extending out off of your house. And then it just has the few plants that you're, so you're allowed to have a few plants, you know, off your house, but you can't have like, I guess, an operation of just, because you're allowed to have six to 12 marijuana plants and trees are good. It's good to plant trees. You don't want to waste a bunch of water on, you know, bullshit, but I don't know. Trees are, trees are, you know, pretty good. Trees are pretty good. So let's keep on going with our definitions. Overlay zone districts established. Overlay, overlay districts are superimposed over the existing or underlying zone district, and the overlay district regulations are in addition to those of the underlying zone district. Uses permitted in the underlying zone district are permitted where an overlay district is also in effect as long as the proposed land use is found to be in conformance with the applicable standards for both the zone district and the additional standards and restrictions of the overlay district. Okay. Fun. So you got a watershed protection overlay district, and then you got a floodplain overlay district, and a community town site overlay district, and then you have zone district regulations, section 4.1, use tables A, use requiring administrative zoning review, land use administrative L, use requiring limited impact review, review before the planning commission S. Use requiring special review. Review before the Board of County Commissioners. Dun, dun, dun. E. Use exempt from permit requirement in not allowable use. So I want to say Conejos County has a Board of equal, uh, equaliz Equalizers or Equalization. But here they have the land in Costilla County. They have the Land Use Administrator. That's the person who runs the planning and zoning office. And then you have the Board of County Commissioners, which is really what they're working for or who they're working for anyways. And in between them, there's the Planning Commission. And I would assume there's still a Planning Commission. So in Conejos County, it would be the Board of Equalization. But in Costilla County, it's the Planning Commission. So in not allowable use, E use is exempt from permit requirements. So E is awesome. N is like, oh my goodness. And then ALRS. ALRS, is it just a land use administrator? It could be a limited impact review, which means it needs to go before the planning commission. Or is it big special review? And then it needs to go before the board of county commissioners. You could also appeal the land use administrator to the planning commission and appeal the planning commission to the board of county commissioners. Number one, all uses in floodplain overlay and watershed protection overlay districts are subject to special use review. Except for the construction of single-family dwellings subject to review by the Land Use Administrator, all single-family dwellings within the Watershed Protection Overlay District shall follow the review criteria and design guidelines of the Watershed Protection Overlay District. Certain land use changes within the zone districts and overlay districts because of their intensity or location will have the potential to cause significant impacts, will require 1041 review that applies to all matters of state interest designed by the county, whether located on private or public land within the unincorporated areas of Costilla County, warrant review by the Board of County Commissioners. Page 26. Oh, man, we are, we are moving on along, moving on along. Now that you have like four or five pages of just charts so from 26 to 30, and these charts have whether or not in an agricultural district, if you're allowed to have each and, you know, so let's just take a, a car wash. Can you have a car wash? It says S-S-L-S-N-S. So in industrial areas, no, you cannot have a car wash in uh, a car wash in industrial areas. And then it had a couple S's and it had a couple L's. The S is special review. That's the big one. And then the L is the planning commission. So essentially, no matter what zoning what zone you're if you want a car wash you're going to have to go before the planning commission or the county board of directors there's a church earthship home educational facility day case day care center duplex correctional facility convenience store a whole bunch of stuff accessory agricultural retail sales and a whole bunch of things here bakery library livestock animal husbandry machine shop 
industrial, indoor recreation, amusement, or theater, hospital, hoop house, home occupation, golf course, forestry, fire station. So it kind of really, I mean, this took a lot of fucking time. So for people that say that none of this is law, none of this is law, all this chart, all this resort lodge, restaurant with a drive through pumping station, batch plant, professional office, restaurant, sawmill, sewage treatment facility. You would think by listing all these different professions, it would ins inspire more, you know, instead of people wanting to improve their lots and establish brand new things there, it's like people are just too afraid and they don't know what to do. Salvage yard, sanitation, landfill, sawmill, sewage treatment facility, welding shop, wind-powered electric. So they're saying... If you want to be, you know, bring some sort of operation here, then let's see, temporary firework stands and Christmas tree lots. It says all administrative reviews, but not in the urban residential. No temporary batch plants. Okay. So those are some of the lots, some of the lot stuff. Zone districts, minimum lot size, minimum front setback, minimum side setback, minimum rear setback, maximum building height. 35 feet, two stories, 50 feet, 35 feet, 160 acres, yada, yada, yada. So zone districts, right? Agricultural, commercial, industrial, then also the three residential, rural residential, estate residential, and urban residential. They're saying that there's, you know, front side, rear setbacks. Meaning, if you have, as I had a rural residential, 25 feet, that means I can't build my fence. It's got to be 25 feet away from the road. The front set back away from the road is 25 feet. That allows the county to put in whatever water pipes and whatever electric lines and shit that they need. A little thing off to the side. So, that's what that means. In a rural residential, you have to, there's 25 feet front setback. A state residential is a 20 feet setback. And then there's a footnote seven setbacks for all new construction shall be established as part of the land use permit review process. So park and reserve 5.2, 5.3 review criteria. This section describes the review criteria that will be applied by the county in its decisions to approve, approve with conditions or deny request for land use permits for developments that are classified as rezoning administrative review limited impact review, special review, and mobile home parks. I filled out my application. They said, thank you for your application. And then they give me, you know, I paid $1,000 or so for three different permits. And they went ahead and, and put like a, um, what you call, plastic over the piece of paper. They made the paper all nice. It looked like a permit. It looked like, they said, just post this up on the thing. But when he said, you know, thank you for your application, basically they're playing fucking games. They didn't actually give me a permit, even though I paid for the permit and they handed me a permit. And technically it wasn't a permit because it was just an application that hadn't been revoked, which is some fucking bullshit. I mean, here they could have said, okay, we'll approve it, but with conditions or they'll deny it, right? You can approve it, deny it, or you can approve it with conditions. So you can look at the, you know, the plan. What's, what would be your problem, you piece of shit? What the fuck is your problem, you piece of shit? <laughs> I'm paying for the fucking permits. Is my money not fucking good enough here? When am I being too kind? Don't, don't wink, kid. All plans submitted for review shall be prepared by a qualified professional. Lily, Lily! My dog is snoring up a storm. So, carry on. Onwards and forwards. This section describes the review criteria that would be applied by the county in its decisions to approve, approve with conditions. All plans submitted for review shall be prepared by a qualified professional. All plans, reports, and specifications for development required by this code shall be prepared by and under the supervision of a qualified professional licensed to do business in the state of Colorado final public improvement plans, reports, and specifications shall bear the seal and signature of a qualified professional licensed in the state of Colorado to perform such work. A. General review criteria. The following general review criteria shall apply to all uses that require land use permit except uses subject to review and approval under community overlay district standards. Page 32 of 87 
Hell yeah, general review criteria. General review criteria. The follow the following general review criteria shall apply to all uses that require a land use permit except uses subject to review and approval under community overlay district standards. Number one, property rights. The applicant shall have obtained all necessary property rights, permits, and approvals necessary to conduct the activity. Two, comprehensive plan and intergovernmental agreements. The use is consistent with relevant provisions of the Costilla County Comprehensive Plan and any intergovernmental agreement between the county and the municipality that applies to the area where the use will occur. Three, mobile home. A, mobile homes manufactured prior to 1976 are prohibited in unincorporated Costilla County. B, Applicant has applied for a hookup permit in compliance with the provisions of Section 5.4C. C. Mobile home will be located in compliance with the provisions of this code. For manufactured home, construction shall be in compliance with an applicable industry standards and the structure will be safe and habitable. habitable. Water supply. All land use changes for which water is required a necessary element of the development shall provide a water supply. That is legally and physically adequate in terms of quality, quantity, dependability, and pressure. Article 12, Section 12.7. 6. Sewage disposal and wastewater treatment. All land use changes shall not be permitted unless a method of sewage disposal is available to that lot or development that complies with applicable standards of the Costilla County Individual Sewage Disposal System Regulations and of the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, individual sewage disposal systems will not be allowed on parcels less than one acre in size. Article 12, Section 12.6. 7. Risk from natural hazards. The use shall not be permitted if it is subject to risk from natural hazards. A report prepared by a qualified professional may be required to determine if hazards are present on the site. Article 12, Section 12.20. See preliminary plan checklist. Utilities. Public utilities shall be available to serve the use. Access and roadways. Access to and from the use shall be safe and in conformance with applicable county access standards. Road serving the proposed use have the capacity to accept the additional traffic generated by the use safely and efficiently. 10. Compatibility. The nature, scale, and intensity of the proposed use shall be compatible with adjacent land uses. And will not result in an adverse impact to adjacent land. The county is authorized to impose conditions on the approval of any land use permit that are deemed necessary to mitigate to mitigate potential adverse impacts to adjacent uses. Conditions may include, but are not limited to, impacts related to hours of operation, noise and glare, lighting, height of structures, and dust control. Page 33, water quality protection to use shall not cause degre degradation of the quality of surface or groundwater resources. The use shall not cause degradation of the quality of surface or groundwater. So having the cows shit in the water is not good for groundwater or the surface water. 12. Vi visual impacts. The use shall preserve views and vistas, construction on ridgelines that are visible from major roadways or residential development, shall be prohibited. The design of the activity shall be compatible with the surrounding natural environment and shall be required to comply with the watershed protection overlay guidelines when located within the watershed protection overlay zone wildlife 13. The proposed use shall not be located in wildlife habitat areas as defined by Colorado Division of Wildlife unless evidence is provided by the applicant that demonstrates that mitigation recommended by the Division of Wildlife in the county will offset impacts created by the proposed use 14. Ability to provide services. Air quality, nuisance, natural and cultural resources, recreation impacts, traffic, erosion, stormwater runoff, protection of agricultural lands, irrigation ditches, rights of way, maintenance, easement, no adverse effect on agricultural operations, review criteria for rezoning request. Unless otherwise provided in these regulations, the following criteria shall apply to rezoning request. Number one, initiation. Rezoning may be initiated by the Board of County Commissioners, the Planning Commission, the Land Use Administrator, the legal owner of any property in Costilla County or their authorized agent. No rezoning request shall be processed unless it is accompanied by a request to conduct a specific land use. Two, no spot zoning. The proposed rezoning shall result in a logical and orderly development pattern and shall not constitute spot zoning. Three, change in area. 
The area in the vicinity of the proposed rezoning has changed or is changing to such a degree that it is in the public interest to encourage a new use or density in the area demonstrated community need. The proposed rezoning addresses a dim, dim, demonstrated community need with respect to facilities, services, or housing. Five, correction of original zone designation. The proposed rezoning addresses errors in the original zone district map. Review criteria for mobile home, mobile home parks, and RV park campground. Number one, permit required. A land use permit is required to establish a mobile home park or recreational vehicle park campground. And for additions to existing parks and campgrounds to establish a mobile home park or recreational vehicle park. Or for additions to existing parks, the provisions set forth in this article are in addition to the special review application, review and approval procedures. Two, hookup permit required. A, an individual mobile home to be occupied as a single family dwelling and not located in a mobile home park is a use subject to administrative zoning review in the agricultural rule residential and estate residential zone districts. The provisions set forth in this article are in addition to the administrative zoning review application, review and approval procedures. All mobile homes require a hookup permit prior to being located on the property or being occupied. C, no recreational vehicle park campground space shall be occupied if the space has not received the appropriate hookup permits. D, it shall be unlawful for any mobile home to be moved onto a lot or into a mobile home park space or to be moved from one space to another within the mobile home park without first applying for a hookup permit. Three, restricted use. A, mobile home use restricted to single family dwelling. The sole use of a mobile home shall be for the purpose of a single family dwelling. Use of a mobile home as an accessory structure or temporary structure for the purpose of storage is prohibited. B, recreational vehicle use restricted. Use of a recreational vehicle for storage purposes as an accessory structure or as a dwelling space for any purpose other than the temporary dwelling for travel, recreation, or vacation use is prohibited. C, long-term camping is in a recreational vehicle is restricted use of a recreational vehicle or other camping shelter for longer than a total of 14 days during any consecutive three months on the same parcel shall require a long-term camping permit, which may be obtained from the planning department for application submittal requirements. In addition to the relevant application requirements for use subject to special review, additional submittal requirements shall apply to a land use permit application for a mobile home park or recreational vehicle park campground or additions to existing park campground. A checklist of the requirements is available from the land use administrator. Review criteria applicable to mobile home parks and RVs. No land use permit for a mobile home park shall be approved unless the mobile home park satisfies the following review criteria. These standards shall be applied in addition to the standards for approval of land use permits subject to special review. A. Site selection criteria for mobile home parks. I. Comprehensive plan compliance. The mobile home park shall be in compliance with the comprehensive plan. I. I. Vegetation. Mobile home parks shall be located in sparsely to moderately wooded sites providing shade trees, natural buffering from the environment and from public views, topography. The topography of the proposed site shall be free from natural hazards and subject to ready access and ease of maintenance, protection of natural environment, historical and archaeological features. As for existing streams and other natural amenities shall be preserved, adequate, adequate mitigation measures shall be provided for wildlife hazard mitigation, the protection of critical wildlife habitat, wildlife migration corridors, and the preservation of historical and archaeological features. Five hazards. Mobile home parks shall not be sited in areas subject to flooding, fire, or other natural hazards, nor shall they be located in proximity to chronic nuisances such as noise, smoke, fumes, or odors. B. Site improvement standards for mobile home parks and RV parks and campgrounds. Access. The park or campground shall have safe access to a public road that accommodates all traffic generated by the use and by emergency vehicles. Drainage. The park or campground shall be located on a well-drained site that is graded or drained and is to be free from stagnant pools of water. Landscaping. The site plan shall include a landscape plan that provides for adequate landscaping to provide buffering from 
adjacent uses and roadways and to prevent erosion the required landscape setback will be established on a case-by-case -case basis during the special review process minimum